from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Chicago, everybody. The Windy City, you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. And we're here day two at Veeam On 2018. The Cube's second year doing Veeam On. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Patrick Osborne is here. The newly minted VP and GM of Big Data and Secondary Storage. And Cube alumni. HPE and many time Cube alum. Did you get a sticker? Yeah, okay. I, it's already on my laptop. Uh, awesome, great to see you again. Good to see you guys. Thanks so much for coming on. Always fun at, at Veeam On. Yep. You know, they, have, they have a big presence at, at your show, HPE Discover. They painted the, the Chai Town green. Yep. What's going on at the show for you guys? Uh, so a huge partner for us in our ecosystem. Uh, as you guys know, HPE in the world of virtualized workloads, like, you know, we definitely own the space uh, in terms of the number of VMs sitting on our infrastructure, and they are a great partner. They have, um, you know, we've got thousands of customers, and I think what we're seeing too is that as Veeam uh, grows up into the midsize and enterprise space, that is, you know, that's where our wheelhouse is, and so we're getting a lot of customer interactions in that space, and then with some of our offerings around Nimble and SimpliVity, where they play very well in the commercial segments, um, that's a, a great way for us to go grab new logos, be present in the channel, so it's, it's a really good partnership for us on both ends. I definitely want to understand what's going on in big data, but before we get there, mm. let's talk a little bit about secondary storage and, and your point of view there. We know that Data protection is moving way up on the, the list yep. of, of CXO priorities. We also know there's a dissonance in the customer base between the expectations of how much automation is actually there from the line of business versus what IT can, can deliver. Yeah, yeah. And so there's this, this gap, and, and, and now you have multi-cloud coming on in a big way, mm -hmm. digital transformation, so it feels like backup and recovery and data protection is, is transforming. Throw in security and it even complicates sure. it further. What's your point of view on what's going on in this mix? Well, certainly the sands are shifting in the secondary storage market. I think because of uh, a heightened uh, customer expectation in this area, whether it's, you know, I want to do more with my data uh, running, you know, things that we do at Veeam, like test dev automation, sandboxing, security, um, you know, ransomware, all those are higher level data services than just what people were doing in the past around backup and recovery. So for us, we're, you know, really, uh, you know, focused a lot on automation, right, in this space. The death of backup and recovery in that traditional space is, is uh, essentially caused by complexity, right? So automate or die in this space. Nobody wants to deal with backup, right? What you want is outcomes. And what we're doing is, uh, for our product line, we've got sort of this three-tiered mantra of, predictive, cloud ready, and timeless. So we want to be able to, through uh, platforms like InfoSight, right, be able to heavily, heavily automate that, all those activities. Uh, cloud ready because, you know, as we talked before, it's a hybrid world. People, especially, especially in secondary storage, want to have some data on-prem and certainly a lot of it for archival and retention off-prem. And then timeless is sort of this um, scenario around even though I'm operating a data center, I want the purchasing experience to be elastic and like you get in the cloud, right? So consumption-based, as a service. So that's what we're trying to bring to the market uh, for secondary storage and storage in general. Awesome. Yeah. Patrick, as I look at this space, you talk about that hybrid multi-cloud world that we're mm. talking about. The two bit main things are data and, and my application. So you talked a bit about the data. Connect for us kind of the applications, you think cloud native and 12 factor, yeah. or, you know, microservices versus traditional applications, and you've got that whole spectrum. What are you seeing from your customers? How are you helping them? Yeah, so um, we're definitely seeing a lot of the, the tech leading customers in the enterprise from HPE, you know, the, the, the big logos, right, that are out there disrupting themselves, disrupting industry, are massively betting on analytics, right? So they've moved from, certainly from databases to batch, now it's all what you know, I think people call it fast data, streaming analytics, Kafka, Spark. So we're seeing uh, our, that part of our business at HP is growing like non-sequentially, right? So it's, 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 really, it's really good business for us. But what's going on right now is that the customers who are doing this, these are all net new apps, 
Kubernetes, you know, new styles of application, and there it's not a rip and replace, it's more of an augmentation scenario where you're providing new services on top of existing apps. So that is very new, and I think one of the things we'll see over the next couple of years is how do I protect those workloads? How do I provide multi-cloud for them? So it's, it's an interesting space, it's very nascent, a lot of tech you know, heavy investment going on for the, you know, the, the big players in the market, right. but that's going to tail, that's going to have a long tail into the mid-range. How will the data protection architecture sort of change for mm. those new emerging applications? You know, maybe IOT you know, is another piece of that, yeah. and, and maybe where does your partnership with Veeam fit into that? Yeah, so we are having a number of strategy discussions on that this morning, you know, and I think in that space is, you know, there's a lot of identification that has to go on. Do I want to back it up? Do I care, right? Is that, are those persistent streams or that IOT data that's coming in, do I really have to back it up at the end of the day or can I back up the results? So a lot of it is not just an availability uh, issue, it's certainly a data management issue, but a lot of the tools that uh, we would need to do that today, they're focused on bare metal, VMware, virtualization, a lot of stuff hasn't been written yet, right? So I think there's a lot of actual tech development that has to go on in this space, and I think we're kind of poised together as partners to deliver in that area in the next couple of years. Mm. Um, you guys have this tagline, we make hybrid IT simple. Yes. IT, you know. Very ain't, quantifiable. Ain't, ain't simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, where does storage fit into that equation? Yeah, I, the thing, the stats that blow my mind was, I think IDC came out with this, is that there's essentially around 500 million apps in the data center today. And then, you know, they're in any sort of spectrum of bare metal, being virtualized, maybe being containerized. In the next four years, there's going to be 500 million net new apps. Right, so that's like, it's mind blowing in terms of most people have a flat budget, maybe a little increase. So you're thinking you're doubling the amount of apps you have and all the services around it. So for us, the automation piece is absolutely key, right? So anything we can do with InfoSight as a platform, we're going to be extending that to other products. You've seen we, we've done it for 3PAR, uh, we'll be printing that experience, but anything we can do around automation, analytics, that's going to take a lot of the mystery and complexity out of managing these apps and services, I think is a win for the customers, and that's why they're going to buy into the platforms. Yeah, it's like, imagine if you're a young family, you got two kids and you have twins. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Or you decide to have two more, like I did. <laughs> Patrick, we've been talking about intelligence in the storage world for decades. Yes. Why is it real and more, you know, more real and different now than it was in some of the previous generations? Yeah, I think you know the some of the techniques. Like, so we've had systems that have you know called home and brought telemetry you know home forever, right? Mm -hmm. But I think what's going on is that as you take the tools that we've developed, and a lot of them are new, right? That are allowing you to do this. Um, it's it's the practition of the data science, which is like the key at the end of the day. So when we InfoSight is an amazing piece of technology. A lot of the magic is in the way that you set up your teams uh, and to be able to take that on, right? So it's no longer a product manager, an engineering guy, support person in a different organization, right? What we have is these, what we call a peak team, right? Which just takes all the functions, brings them together with a data scientist to be able to take a look at how can I do machine learning, AI, a more predictive model to actually take use of this data, right? And that, that, I think the techniques and the organizational design is the big change that's happened over the last couple years. Mm. Data's always been there, right? But now we know what to do with it. Yeah, I and mean, like you said before, the, the, the curve is reshaping. It's not this linear Moore's Law curve anymore. Yeah. It's this exponential curve. That exactly. I, I can't even draw it anymore. I, I don't know which, you know, it used to be easy. Oh, yeah. just put, to put the dotted line straight out. Now it's twisting. So that increases the need, obviously, for automation. Talk about how HPE's automation play is, is differentiable in the marketplace. Um, so I think a couple, a couple of things from an, a differentiated perspective. Obviously we talked a lot about InfoSight as a platform. Um, as a portfolio company, we're definitely trying to take out the friction in terms of the deployment and automation of some of these big data environments. So our, you know, our mission is to be able to, like you would, stand up uh, some analytic workloads in the public cloud to provide that same experience on-prem. Right, and essentially be the broker and for the user, that user experience. So that's an area that we're going to differentiate. And then, um, you know, in general, there's not that many mega portfolio companies, right, anymore. And I feel like that we we are exploiting that for our customers, bringing together compute, networking, and storage, and certainly on the on the automation side. So uh, for us, you know, I, I really feel that 
you're, you're no longer going to be buying on horizontal lines anymore. You know, best of breed servers, best of breed networking, best of breed storage, mm -hmm. but bringing together a complete vetted stack for a set of workloads from a vendor like HPE. So, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, it was just announced. It's not the deal's not closed yet, but just to mention to the audience, HPE just made an acquisition of uh, Plexi, a yeah. networking specialist. Our good uh, friends, Rich Napolitano, Rich Napolitano and, yeah, and uh, Dad's Bill uh, Fort, just, yep. uh, just this week, yep. which is interesting because that brings cloud scale to some of the hyper-converged infrastructure. It's essentially hyper-converged networking, so really interested to see how that plays out. HPE has made a number of really effective acquisitions over the last several years, start, starting really with 3PAR, yep. uh, was the one, uh, clearly Aruba, you know, the Nimble acquisition, you know, SimpliVity, so uh, SGI. Yep. So some really strong, both tactical and strategic moves uh, for HPE. Really interested to see how Plexi sorts out. Okay. We got to talk sports yes. for a minute. Uh, I asked Peter McKay this, this question, and I asked these Boston sports fans, if you were Robert Kraft, would you have traded Tom Brady? No. No way. No way. No way. Okay, that's just, they're consistent yeah. with Peter Yeah, McKay. no way. That's like trading Montana, that, that, that didn't work out. <laughs> uh, I, that way, yeah. It did work out, right? Yeah, you but I mean. Montana, then they won another Super Bowl. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I think it's, uh, for me, I, he's an icon, and then he's still operating at maximum efficiency, which is amazing, but what do I you think, think he's got of, a lot of legs in him. What do you think of the, well, he's got a, yeah, hopefully he stays, yeah. and hopefully he does play till 45. Yeah. What do you think of the Gar Garoppolo trade, though? Are you disappointed that they didn't get more? Or do you think um, it was the right move to hang on just in case Brady went down again? I think it's the right move at the end of the day, right? You're not going to get much for him anyways, and they're not certainly not going to pay, you know, pay him out as a, as a backup quarterback. What I don't like, though, is the fact that he's gone to the 49ers, and that's where most of uh, my engineering team is in the Bay Area. So to have to deal with the Yahoo 49ers fans you know, for the next couple of years uh, is going to be painful, but it's good. It's a good renewed rivalry. So you're not a... Uh, a Celtics, Warriors, you know, yeah, Patriots. Right. You're not an Niners. instant transplanted 49ers fan because of Garoppolo, no, right? No, absolutely not. He's carpetbagger, he's out. Right? He's, a, he's, okay, out. Right. he's off the team, he's, it. yeah, he's out of the house. Okay, yeah, Bruins were a big disappointment this yeah, year. We thought yeah. that, uh, you know, the Celtics were super exciting, let's go there. I mean, you know, you watch the Celtics early in the year because you're like, after Hayward went down, you're yeah. like, oh, kind of, we were all walking around like this. Oh, I, and then you I, saw I felt like I, it's like where Kennedy was shot, right? Yeah, I know right. exactly where I was, right? Yeah. And, then, and then you had people blaming <laughs> Danny Ainge for like, making the move. I'm like, come on, guys. Yeah. So, and then you see what happened with the with the young players. And and then they sort of tailed off a little bit. They were struggling, yeah, yeah. you know, Kyrie's trying to find his way. And now they're the exciting team. Up 2-0 on Cleveland. I mean, you got to believe that LeBron is going to step up his game with a little home cooking. But let's assume for a second that they get by Cleveland, yeah. which will be a huge task. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in the NBA who can stop Kevin Durant, but I'd love to see Marcus Smart try. So yeah, so two things in that in that scenario. One is that who needs Kyrie Irving more right now? Cleveland or Boston, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Yeah, which is amazing. Point. Can you imagine <laughs> being in, saying that a couple months ago, which just blows my mind. And then for me, it's uh, it's a revamping of the NBA, right? If you get the Celtics versus the Warriors and that style of play, I mean, it's definitely, it's cha changed the whole game, right? Shooting guards, ballers, uh, I just, I, I think it's fantastic to see, you know, a whole new style of play in the NBA. It's so right? exciting to see the Celtics back. Team basketball, defense, passing, all of it. And great. ESPN is losing their minds. Yes. They don't know what to do. Stephen A. Smith doesn't know what to say. ESPN he's, lies. He's, he's actually pissed, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, now, Stu, you know, Yankees fan, of course, and you know my line of the Yankees. Stu's kind of a weekend Yankees fan. Yeah. But my line of the Yankees is, Red Sox, you can't beat us in April. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> here it is in May. Dave, I'm just quiet around you because, yeah. you know, I, I, I know where my paycheck comes from. I appreciate from, so. that respect there, Stu. Okay. Patriots were in, right. in agreement. Right. So but think about all these alive. renewed rivalries. It's great. It is great. Celtics, Sixers, Celtics, Sixers could be Red great. Sox, Yankees. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. Love it. And like yeah. you said, San Francisco and, and, Philly. and, the, and the Pats. The Pats. Pats. You know. Love it. Patrick, always a pleasure seeing you. Yeah. Thanks for making Thanks. time out yeah, of your busy schedule. Absolutely. It's great. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this brief break. You're watching theCUBE live from VeeamON 2018.